Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to take our reducers and our actions just a little bit further, and we're going to explore some of the things that you can do beyond just sort of what we've done already. We're going to expand our knowledge so that it makes a little bit more sense in the context of a store that you might be using or a state tree on a website. So check it out as we start to expand our knowledge about reducers and actions in this video. So in the last video, what we did is we had our constant, uh, which is our reducer, even though you'll notice this is just a function, right? And we are using our create store with our reducer. Now, a reducer by name is, like I've mentioned before, inherently kind of a confusing thing, simply because what makes this a reducer? Like, what is the reason why this is called a reducer and not just like something that sorts out your data after an action? Like, why? And the reason really is that it's taking the previous state and it's merging it with the current new state and returning a brand new state object. So again, all of the complex stuff in Redux comes from two spots. It comes from the fact that an action is simply just an object and you have to dispatch it to actually get it to do anything. And two, a reducer is not just modifying the state, it's taking the previous state and merging it with a new version of the state. So those two things are what creates much of the complexities and much of the concern about extra boilerplate code. And even more so when we get into things like action type constants rather than strings, you'll see a little bit of boilerplate code that you might feel is unnecessary. And, and some of that is really take what you need and leave what you don't. So let's get into a little bit more about uh, doing things with actions here. Because because typically, well, maybe not typically, sometimes instead of having an action that does something like simply just output some new string into an object, it's actually outputting the results of some sort of data find, whether you're hitting an API or something like that. For instance, maybe we have an API that's hit and we can sort of mock this up in a fake version. We can say const result result oh, result not with an S is equal to something coming back from an API. Okay, this is just a string, it could be an array, it could be like literally anything, right? But what we're doing is we're hitting an API and we're getting the result here. And now what we can do with this result is we can actually attach this result into our store.dispatch. So here what we're now doing is we're dispatching an action and in addition to having the type of greet me, the result will actually be within the action as well. And in that case, inside of our reducer, we have access to that action with action.result here. Now the word result is not important. This could be anything. You'll often see words like payload or data for this. So let's do of our first greet me and set the value to be action.result. Okay, and now action.result. And now once this refreshes, you can see that our welcome is now set to something, co something coming back from an API. Now this can be really interesting if we want to change this greet me to greet something like greet name. And instead of result, we're just going to have this be the name and we can say Scott in here, right? So we have a new constant variable Scott and we're going to dispatch a type of greet name and the data is just going to be the name of Scott. Now this syntax right here is an equivalent to name is equal to the name variable. Okay, if you haven't seen this syntax right here, it's an ES6 syntax where instead of having to say, hey, name is equal to name, you can just omit that one and say name like this. Okay, so now we're going to greet a name and we have our name being passed in here, so we can access that with action.name. But we wanna set the welcome text to be with backticks in here. I'm gonna use a dollar sign brackets to do string interpolation here, and we can just say, hello. So the welcome text is now going to be hello, and then whatever name we dispatch. So hello, Scott, you can see right here. In addition, if we were to do this exact same thing, let's duplicate this code. And instead of name being equal to name here, we can say name is equal to Courtney. 
Okay, and we can say, we'll see when this refreshes, hello, Courtney. So you can see here that we have our store that's going to dispatch an action. And while this action is going to be the same as greet name, greet name, the output is actually different because we're passing in data. So I mentioned before, this is the kind of thing that we're going to do once we hit an API and we want to set in different types of data, whether that's arrays of objects or just an object itself, or even just a Boolean. Either way, you'll often see this as being something like data or payload. And this doesn't have to be just one thing, right? We could have uh, data and a name and a payload. You can attach as much stuff to this dispatch as you want. Although it is probably more common to have only like one or two things. Uh, that said, there's no reason necessarily for that. Okay, so we've learned quite a bit more about actions and reducers, right? These aren't just these things that accept a property and then have to do some stuff. You can actually have a bit of interaction with them, passing in properties and things like that. And now we've successfully dispatched several actions. I mean, we've dispatched the same action, which is greet name several times with different uh, properties here. But we have an object state tree over here that's not super practical, but represents the state of our object, which right now is just a bunch of strings. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to be adding Redux to a React application, and we're gonna start building a basic toggle, as in we're going to build a reducer and an action that actually have purpose, that's not just setting a greeting or something like that, and it's gonna actually output, and we're going to be able to use it within React. And that's going to set the stage for us doing more complex things like hitting an API and working with all sorts of new and exciting ways of using Redux. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to learn more about Redux and React, head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and purchase this series right now or become a Level Up Pro and get access to all of the awesome series on Level Up Tutorials. For instance, React 16 for everyone or modern CSS layouts or any of the amazing new series that are going to come next year in 2018. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.